Today's topic is the neuromuscular junction. The nervous system is divided into two main parts, the central nervous system, or CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. If the entire neuron is contained within the brain, or spinal cord, then the neuron is considered to be part of the CNS. If any part of the neuron extends outside the brain, or spinal cord, then the neuron is part of the PNS. Neurons in the PNS are afferent sensory neurons, or efferent motor neurons. Efferent or motor neurons may be either autonomic or somatic. Autonomic neurons are under involuntary control, while somatic neurons are under voluntary control. The neuromuscular junction is a synapse that connects axon terminals of somatic motor neurons to skeletal muscle cells or fibers. The neuromuscular junction, or NMJ, allows the neuron to activate the muscle and cause muscle contraction. Many of the cell bodies of somatic motor neurons are found in the spinal cord, specifically in the anterior horn of the gray matter. The axons of these neurons extend away from the spinal cord to innervate skeletal muscle cells, also called muscle fibers. A somatic motor neuron, plus every muscle fiber it innervates, make up what's called a motor unit. Let's talk in more detail now about the neuromuscular junction. Just as it sounds, the neuromuscular junction is a synapse that is the site where the axon terminal of a somatic neuron innervates a skeletal muscle fiber. Notice that the cells never actually come in contact with one another. The space between the neuron and the muscle fiber is known as the synaptic cleft. The neuron portion of the neuromuscular junction, or NMJ, is called the presynaptic terminal. The muscle portion of the NMJ is called the postsynaptic membrane. An action potential traveling down the axon of the neuron needs to be able to generate an action potential in the membrane of the muscle cell. This happens in five major steps. First, an action potential travels down the axon of the neuron and reaches the presynaptic terminal. It causes calcium voltage gated channels in the presynaptic terminal to open allowing calcium ions to enter the cell. The influx of calcium allows for vesicles containing an important neurotransmitter known as acetylcholine, or ACH, to be released into the synaptic cleft. Now in the synaptic cleft, the acetylcholine binds to receptors on ligand-gated sodium channels on the postsynaptic membrane. This binding causes the ligand-gated sodium channels to open and because the sodium concentration in the synaptic cleft is higher than inside the cell, sodium ions rush into the muscle cell. This causes an excitatory postsynaptic potential, or EPSP, in the plasma membrane of the muscle cell. The EPSP causes an action potential to be generated that then travels down the plasma membrane of the muscle cell to ultimately cause muscle contraction. The acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft is broken down by an enzyme known as acetylcholinesterase. Breakdown of acetylcholine is important in order to prevent it from continually causing sodium channels in the postsynaptic membrane to open. This chart shows the action of four different toxins at the neuromuscular junction. Using the information given about each toxin, please attempt to fill in the blanks in the rest of the table. Botulinum toxin affects the neuromuscular junction by inhibiting the release of acetylcholine from pre the presynaptic terminal. If the acetylcholine is not released from the presynaptic terminal, the ligand-gated sodium channels on the postsynaptic membrane are not opened, so no action potential occurs in the muscle. The muscle remains relaxed, resulting in flaccid paralysis. Curare was a toxin used by Native Americans to take down animals while hunting. Curare causes paralysis of the animal's skeletal muscles and makes it so the animal is unable to move. Curare is a neuromuscular blocker that binds to and blocks nicotinic 1 acetylcholine receptors and keeps ligand-gated sodium channels from opening. This action prevents action potentials from being generated in the muscle and results in flaccid paralysis. Latrotoxin, more commonly known as black widow spider toxin, promotes the release of acetylcholine from the presynaptic terminal. Increased acetylcholine being released 
into the synaptic cleft leads to increased frequency of action potentials being generated in the muscle, which causes excess muscle contraction or tetany. The muscle is unable to relax, resulting in spastic paralysis. Finally, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, also known as anticholinesterases, inhibit the action of acetylcholinesterase. Examples of anticholinesterases include organophosphates that are used in certain pesticide preparations. Remember that acetylcholinesterase acts to break down acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Anticholinesterases inhibit acetylcholinesterase that normally breaks down acetylcholine. Anticholinesterases therefore cause acetylcholine levels in the synaptic cleft to rise, resulting in increased frequency of action potentials in the muscle, leading to spastic paralysis. Thanks for watching.